Okay. Good, afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome everyone, Welcome, everyone to, the to the October 21st, 21st City of, City of Murfreesboro Planning Commission, Planning Commission meeting. Uh, we uh, we will, call will call the meeting to order. We do have a we quorum, quorum today. today. Yeah. And if I could quickly just, uh, since we have a full quorum again, if I could say welcome to Sean Wright, our newest member of the City Council and also is going to be serving on our Planning Commission. Shall we continue? But welcome. Okay, but welcome. We're glad, We're to, glad have to have you. Oh. oh. After, After determination the determination of quorum, quorum I'm, supposed I'm supposed to read the consent agenda. agenda. So we will. Started on that. What do, you think? what do you think? Okay. Okay. We are going to read the consent agenda. agenda. Uh, we, will uh, we will start, start out. out. Item A is, is Salem Creek, Salem Creek Section, Section 8, 8 preliminary plat for 48 lots, lots on approximately 25.95 acres, zoned RS10, zoned RS10 located, along located along Shady Forest Drive. Forest Drive. Salem, Salem Creek Partnership, Creek Partnership, Partnership the is the developer. Item B, Item B is Shelton, is Shelton Square, Square Section, Section 5, five a preliminary plat for 46 lots on 12.6 acres, zone PRD, located along Bridgemore Boulevard, 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 Shelton Square, Square LLC, LLC is, is the developer. developer. Item, C Item C is Carlton Landing, Section, Section 1, one phase, phase 2, final plat for 25 lots on 23.6 acres, zoned RS10, located west of New Salem Highway, Cornerstone Development, LLC, is the, is the developer. Item D, Item D is, Walmart is Walmart Super Center, Center resubdivision of Lot 3, final plat for two lots on 4.45 acres, zoned commercial highway, located along Shelbyville Pike and Tiger Hill. Racetrack Petroleum Inc. is the developer. Item E has been withdrawn from the consent agenda for today. Item, Item F is, is Buchanan, Buchanan Estate, Section, Section 8, eight phase, phase 2, final plat for 46, 46 lots on 22.5 acres, zoned RM in unincorporated Rutherford County, and served as an outside the city sewer customer, located along Ronstadt Drive, Jones Construction Company developer. Item G is Manny Station, final plat for one lot on 0 0.47 acres, zone PUD, located along South Manny Avenue, Rhett Kelton is the developer. Item H is Greenberg, final plat for two lots on 0 0.54 acres, zone RS8 and CCO, Carmen Greenberg, developer. Item I, Item I is Valley Farms, Section, Section 2, two. Final, plat final plat for 32 lots on 6.5 acres on PUD in unincorporated Rutherford County and served as an outside the city sewer customer located along Pinion Street and Red Barn Road. Valley Farms Group LLC is the developer. Item J is Oakland Court Phase 2, site plan for 74 multifamily dwelling units on 10.07 acres, zone PRD and CCO, located along North Academy Street and East Embry Street, Murfreesboro Housing Authority developer. Item K is Autumn Plaza, Phase 2 and 3, Site plan for 55,059 square foot senior apartment building and a 66,925 square foot assisted living facility on 4.1 acres, zoned PUD, located along Old Fort Parkway and Autumn Town Way, Autumn Plaza Partners developer. 
and, and item L, L mandatory referral to consider, to consider the abandonment of an existing drainage, drainage easement located within, located within the Puckett Creek, Creek Station, Station subdivision along Cedar Glades Drive. Drive. Mr. Matt, Mr. Taylor, Matt Taylor, Taylor, on behalf of Regionwood LLC, LLC is, the is the applicant. Are there any, are there any items, items on the consent, consent agenda, agenda that, that anyone would like, would like removed, removed for further, for further discussion? discussion? Not, we're ready for a motion on the consent agenda. I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion that we approve the consent, consent, agenda, consent agenda as presented. presented. Second. Second. Motion and motion a second. And a second. All, in favor, All in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? Any opposed? All right. All right. Next is Next our, is our gateway, gateway design, design overlay. overlay. We have two we items, have two here, items today. here today. First one is, First the, one is the commons. The gateway, the gateway Valvoline, Valvoline, final design and site plan, plan review for 2,078 2, square foot motor vehicle services on 14.8 14 acres. acres. Zoned MU, Zoned MU and, and GDO1, located, located along Medical Parkway. Center Parkway. Valvoline, Valvoline Instant, Instant Oil, Oil Change is the developer. Is the developer. Hello, Green. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I was hoping I, was hoping I, I was, was, was exempt, exempt, from, the exempt from the echo bonus. bonus. <laughs> the first, the item, first under item under the gateway portion, portion of our agenda is for you to, for you to consider the construction, construction of a new, of a new motor, vehicle motor vehicle service. service. Facility. You are muted. This property is located on the north side of Medical Center Parkway, adjacent to a commercial strip center, which has a firehouse sub and a Walgreens. And on the opposite side is a retail building that we call the L-shaped building, or Womack Property L-shaped building, and um, you may be familiar with that. This this disturbed area is a two is 2.7 acre portion of a larger property. The overall master plan property is. 14.8 acres, and the developers opted the to, in lieu like of creating lot microphone. lines, do lease lines for most of the development. So mute. all the development is on one lot with the exception of a bank, which is an out parcel. So the lack of the property lines with by creating lease lines means that some of our development standards that you would ordinarily see in the Gateway Design Overlay District between commercial developments, they didn't need to design to those. For example, we have a requirement that the parking lot and the adjacent property line need to be 15 feet from each other. So 15 feet on either side is a total of 30 feet. You don't see this on the site plan because there's no actual property line between this, this, um, this Vaveline and the adjacent L-shaped building or the apartments to the north. So I just wanted to point it out to you why it was different. We would not allow um, them to come in in the future and add a property line here without going in and re, uh, redoing the site to meet those minimum standards. This is something that we dealt with. Usually we advise against it because inevitably people like to sell off um, out parcels. And so we, we ask that you design your plan to meet all the standards. But in this case, they could um, demonstrate that they had a strong ownership regime. And so that's why we're considering the lease lines at this time. So when you look at this property, that is a, um, that is a large reason why the buildings are closer to each other than we might normally see. There's also, not shown on the screen now, but there's also a significant TVA easement that runs across the property, which um, very strongly dictates what can be constructed underneath that easement. It is a regulated line, so it's highly regulated by TVA. Essentially, they don't allow structures of most kinds beneath it. They allow parking, they allow drainage, but they would not allow, say, a dumpster enclosure or a building or um, a shade tree as we would ordinarily require in parking lots. So when we look at these plans, you'll see that there's some places where you would expect to see a shade tree in the parking lot. It's not located there, and that's because it's in the TVA easement. I'm going to interrupt just one second. If the folks that are on the on uh, joining us by Zoom could mute their their Zoom, um, I think that will eliminate any any remnants of the echo that we have. Thank you. Good. Hmm. I knew it couldn't you, have been our fault. Um, so when you look at the plan, that's why you see some of those shade trees missing. It's because it's a regulated TVA line. And of course, safety is very important to um, our community. You did see this building last month for initial design review, where the focus was on architecture. 
there um, wasn't a lot of comment at that time. I did the changes from that from that submittal to the submittal include. I had them go through and add that masonry base along the building where it was missing, and so you may or may not have noticed last time. I think the meeting got a little longer than we were expecting before, and so we didn't maybe spend as much time on these elements. But I knew that that would be something that you would bring up at final design review if you didn't catch it initial, so they were able to address that. I think they've also improved the building by adding some spandrel glass faux windows to the second story. Before it was brick on the first story, and then entirely ephus on the top. They've added some brick columns on the ends and the spandrel glass, and so I think that that's been an improvement to this design. So that is what's different to the building since the time you saw it last. They've also added some architectural lighting with some gooseneck fixtures. <coughs> so um, before you now is the master plan for the development. And this master plan actually does show that significant TVA easement along the property. The site is located just here, and you can see that the setback for the building, it's further to the back than the other buildings. Generally, we like them to line up, but in this case, they couldn't put that building in the TVA easement. This um, overall project is 14.8 acres, so they were required to design formal open space, sometimes on these small lots. If they're under our acreage or square footage requirement, we don't require them in the gateway. But here it is a larger lot, and so what they were able to do is do an enhanced walkway from the serpentine sidewalks along Medical Center Parkway into the site. And um, staying out of the TVA easement, some decorative seat walls and some lighting and some decorative pavement sidewalks and additional landscaping outside that TVA easement. And so they were able to design a space that exceeds our size requirements. And I noted in our comments that sometimes we expect some additional elements in our formal open space, maybe some shade structures, gazebos, arbors, uh, shaded seating areas. But in this case, we were slightly more flexible because of that TVA easement. You're really limited on what you can do, and so what we're presenting to you is a little bit different, but I don't think it's so far out of um, what we've approved in the, class, in the past that um, I wanted to bring it to your attention. I just did want to mention it's a little different because we consider the site constraints and, and how unique this property is. The, um, the, the comment that I wanted to point out to you and just make sure that the applicant has an opportunity to speak to is one regarding um, additional buffering. I've gone back to the master plan and I'm pointing to the location, the dark gray of the Valvoline. Because there are no property lines, and this isn't a public right of way, it's a private drive along the rear property line, the setback for this apartment building is very close to the street. I think that was something we liked because it created a streetscape and a like a, um, I think more traditional walkable neighborhood. What I asked them to do was to look at the interface between the back of this building, which is oil change, and um, their property line to see if there was anything they could do to make sure they weren't disrupting the quality of life for the people who live in the apartments. I'm specifically concerned about noise. Um, I've heard some testimony from the Chamber of Commerce that they can hear the tire change facility next door. I don't think that this particular use has the same noise, but say it were to change uses in the future and it would go from Valvoline to something else, we would want to make sure that um, that we were thinking about the quality, quality of life of the residents. And our zoning ordinance allows the Planning Commission to place additional restrictions if you think it's appropriate or additional buffering for uses that might be incompatible. So I'm gonna invite Mr. Taylor to like turn just a moment to tell you what he's done in that area to, to kind of mitigate that concern. Otherwise, um, they've been able to respond to our comments and address them. I, I would be comfortable with you, if you were comfortable today, recommending approval subject to all staff comments. Mr. Taylor? Thank you, Ms. Green. Welcome, Mr. Taylor. Thank you, Ms. Green. I was really looking forward to hearing myself over and over again, so <laughs> disappointed. But uh, I think Ms. Green did a good job going over any of the changes that we've had. I think we've done a good job trying to address the formal open space with the restrictions that we've got from the TVA easement. As far as the buffer into the north, I think that one thing that helps us versus some of the issues that the chamber has had is one, we're not a tire change in place, we're changing fluids. And so you won't have the air wrench going. And two, our bays are not pointed toward those residents. They're pointed out to uh, each side. And so any uh, noise wouldn't be directly uh, facing the residents to the north. And so I think that uh, both of those items would help. Uh, the chamber gets the direct noise from those tunnels from the uh, tire change in place next door. Uh, we have added hollies along that northern property line or, or 
project perimeter, if you will, instead of property line. And so I think that will start to uh, give some visual um, break up through there and visual buffers as those develop and grow in the future. But I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any other questions? The host would like you to unmute your microphone. You can press star six to unmute. The host would like you to unmute your microphone. You can press star six to unmute. Somebody on Zoom might have questions. Uh. <laughs> Then any further comment, Mr. Taylor? The that host would, help would like us you out? to unmute your microphone. You can press star six. I've got nothing to else to add. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Comments and questions from the Planning Commission. So, Margaret Ann, um, I'm sure we've heard of lease lines before. It's kind of a new term for me, though. Um, so w you made the comment that because this is such a, uh, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but strong ownership regi regime. So are we saying that the lease lines are between the office building that's to the left of this bill? Are we saying, or, or I mean, I know who owns the, who developed this property, but it sounds like there is some buffering in, uh, in the back of this building, but we're saying there's no buffering on the side, right? Mostly I was talking about to the north along the private access drive. Uh -huh. So um, a lease line is basically a private agreement where you, uh, who owns the property, make a deal privately to lease an area to somebody. Um, Planning Commission, City Council, State Law, we regulate to property lines. So unless there's a real property line created, we don't regulate to those. And so um, this is all, well, it's two lots of record. There's a bank here, and then this is all on another lot of record. And, um, and that was approved, of course, with the, the master plan and the, the preliminary plat. What I wanted on this master plan, you can see the drive aisle is about 22 feet wide. And so this use is fairly close to this apartment building. So I wanted to make sure that you were comfortable with the treatments proposed by the applicant um, there because it is a mixed use development of not a vertical, but a horizontal mixed use development. And I just wanted to make sure that um, I brought it up to you as an opportunity to opine upon it. You, I mean, you very well may be comfortable with it or you may want additional treatments. I just thought that there's no change in zoning, so there's no buffering required by ordinance. There's no property lines, so there's no additional setbacks required based on those property lines. Um, what you have are two uses near each other on a master plan development. So the zoning ordinance says that if you do have two uses that you believe are in incompatible, and sometimes motor vehicle sales or oftentimes motor vehicle sales in any type of residential are not compatible. So we look at that interface and making sure that we, what we, what treatments we see in that interface are sufficient to reduce the impact to those people. And so there are, that apartment is, I think it's three story, it could be four story, but, um, and there are balconies on the front, there are units there. So I just wanted to, as a matter of the site plan, review today point out to you that they are rather close and are you comfortable with the the treatment mr taylor outlined thank you you're welcome um i'll just say I, i've never heard this lease lines before either um so <clears throat> it's basically like they've just is if, as if there was a lot line there and somebody's gonna lease a portion of this property, uh, but as if it was a lot two instead of all lot one, they're gonna lot one and two and they'll lease lot one. Now they're just gonna lease a portion of this whole thing that's out there based on some uh, legal description that Mr. Yes. Taylor drew up for them. I, I think that uh Something that's probably the most similar to this is almost the entire avenue is set up this way. So all the restaurants, the only lot there, I think there was two lots that got sold out there. One is where Culver's and I think the other is maybe Starbucks and the mattress store. Um, never been there, so I don't know. But um, I, so the rest of the center is set up exactly like this. So that's your most similar situation that you have there. 
just they just didn't refer to it as leased lines back then, or that was so long ago I just don't remember it now. <laughs> I, Probably I'm sure your memory is much better than mine, but no, uh, I doubt that. But thank you. They are where I learned the term lease line. I hadn't heard it before. And there have been three owners in my career at the Avenue. And when there are new owners, they always come in and, and look at the easiest way to make some money, which is to sell off out parcels. And we had Heinz who asked for the exact same thing. And now we have the new owners who approached us and said, we'd like to just sell off this as an, a parcel. And our response consistently is, if you created a separate lot of record, then the property needs to meet our minimum standards, which is going in and adding that 15 feet, 15 feet. So maybe taking out parking, putting in landscaping, irrigation. So then the costs, it's not as easy of a sell off as they initially think when they first acquire the properties. And um, so that's what, it may not be a real term, but I learned it from avenues. Yes, good. Well, we learn something new every day, so that's great. Um, so this site that we're looking at has the L-shaped building, the Valvoline building that we're looking at on there, and then is, is there's the L-shaped building, um, there's the Valvoline. There are one, two, three, four apartment buildings and a three-story self-storage. Oh. And there's one property line that runs along the south side of the self-storage and the shared access drive. Initially, when this plan was presented to you, this is a bank, it's a credit union. I, I can't remember right now which credit union it is, mm -hmm. but that was a part of this overall development and um, the bank wanted to own their property and early on they were able to, before development happened, create this as a separate lot, although it's a part of this master plan development. So this entire development only has two lots. I see. Liberty, Liberty Financial. Liberty, that's right, yes sir. That's where our whole 14 acres is. is yeah, that's why it's 14 acres, because it includes all those buildings on this one lot of record. And um, and I, my point was that if you don't have those lot lines created with a subdivision plat, some of those design standards don't apply, so the setbacks don't apply. Whereas if there was a lot line between this, like this apartment and the Valvoline, there would be front setbacks that would push those buildings back. Mm -hmm. There's not one, so it doesn't apply. And then there are parking separations in the gateway that say that your parking has to have so much green space between the property lines. So those, we designed to property lines or lot lines um, mm -hmm. in our zoning ordinance and subdivision regulations. That, that drawing is, uh, makes a lot of sense and I can't get that drawing to stay on my, I see that one here. So anyway, operator error again. So what other, um, thank you, I, I, had, I had missed that one totally trying to scroll through here. So I get it now. Thanks, okay. Otherwise, I think the plan is in relatively good order. Other than those two. The main question is, are you all comfortable with the, uh, Hollies, I guess, that have proposed on the north lot line. And I'll zoom in on the plan if you want to see it. I don't know if that helps you at all. So the I'm comfortable with it. I think the building itself is pretty narrow back there. They've got the additional landscaping. Um, it's also not um, against an adjacent parking area, so you don't see it, you know, that takes away from, or adds to the um, distraction of, of the view that the apartments would have. And I'll, I'll comment as well. I think because the apartments are not complete, um, you know, there's, that, that means something to me too. It's not like we're adding, um, you know, that, that building there. Uh, and I don't know when the, when this is supposed to break ground or those sorts of things, but I think Probably the developer has more risk than maybe the the tenant that's moving in there that may be choosing to move in there or can choose to leave. So mm -hmm. that'd be my perspective. Definitely. And there was another comment about maybe something that would prohibit quick change of use, perhaps something that could potentially. No, we're not. No. I just wanted to mention that I thought probably changing uh, oil change would have less of an. Uh, an impact like noise creation than tires based on the pneumatic tools but it could possibly change use so I try not to think of just what the use who the user is today because we you know we live with it for um, a long long time yeah mm -hmm. okay. 
Okay. All right, any other questions or comments? If none, I will move to approve subject to all staff comments. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor, please state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Item B is Puckett Creek Station, Lot 5, Final Design and Site Plan Review for 6,103 square foot office uh, on 0 0.83 acres, zoned CH and GDO1, located along Cedar Glades Drive. Region Wood, Region LLC, Wood LLC is the developer. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Our next application is for you to consider um, final design and site plan approval for Puckett Creek Station, Lot 5. Puckett Creek Station is the commercial subdivision located along Fortress Boulevard and Manson Pike. To familiarize you or help you locate it, it's the property in the gateway across the interstate, as we say. That includes a Walmart neighborhood market, a car wash, a Sonic, and a Camino Real. There are, there's still quite a bit of vacant land here, and, um, and I think we'll, we're seeing development and we'll continue to see some proposals in the future for that. Lot five is directly adjacent to the Camino Real, which has frontage on Cedar Glades Drive. Cedar Glades Drive does um, connect to Manson Crossing Drive. Eventually, Manson Crossing Drive will continue to the north and connect into Manson Pike, which will give the residents who live in Puckett Creek Station and some of the other developments, the residential developments, another way out without forcing them all to go on to Fortress Boulevard, which will be uh, a positive. And so when you see future development, you will see the extension of Manson Crossing Drive. This lot, though, has frontage already created along it, a public right-of-way, so the lot is already created. As a matter of um, the consent agenda, there was an item for a mandatory referral for a drainage easement on this property. There's an easement that exists that has no infrastructure in it, so staff in our public infrastructure and city engineer's office recommended that we do dispose of that easement, and so that was approved today under consent agenda was the easement along the rear of the property. That doesn't remove any requirements for buffering between this development and the adjacent multifamily community, and they are including that. The building has changed somewhat since you've seen it last, but probably not enough to, um, to really generate a lot of attention. We asked for clarification on the base material of this building before it was shown as a smooth face CMU, which is not a permitted material in the gateway. You can use as a secondary material you can have integrally colored split face CMU, but no smooth face CMU. I think it was a matter of nomenclature. Um, what they really have at the base is a simulated stone, a sim simulated smooth stone. And some of the images looked sort of like block and the terminology called it block. So we just wanted to make sure that it was clear and clearly revised. And Mr. Taylor was able to get the architect to change that. Then we also asked for some additional detailing around some of the windows. Uh, sills and lintels and you know not just punch through style walls and so they were able to do that they've slightly increased some of the um, entrance features the covered canopies to meet our um, void requirement that's in the design guidelines so the changes aren't significant but there have been a few the mm -hmm. site plan um, is in relatively good order they've been able to address our staff comments um, they we do not have any form open space on this project because in the gateway if you are under five acres or 40,000 square feet we don't require a formal open space so there's none on this project there's some shown but that's just optional they were able to revise their plan to meet our gateway streetscape master plan originally when Cedar Glade Drive was designed it was designed as a private drive and upon further reflection the developer Charlie Waite came back and requested it for it to be a public road mostly so that uh, lots could be created off of the road. And so there's a bit of a shift in what we would normally see a Gateway Streetscape Master Plan. We would see a separation, six foot separation between the road itself, the sidewalk, street trees. So at this property, they were able to design it to do more of a gradual shift. So from how a private road would be designed to the public road. So it looks a little bit different, but I think they've done a good job integrating those public standards to this road with the change. Other than that, they meet our parking standards. They were able to put a dumpster in. Initially, they were uh, suggesting that carts would be a sufficient way of managing solid waste, and that's not something that we typically would accept in the gateway, and so they have a smaller dumpster that fits their needs here. So they were able to address our staff comments. Um, Mr. Taylor, do you have anything to add? He doesn't have anything to add for this project, but if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. We would ask that you make any approvals subject to all staff comments. Okay. Questions or comments from the Planning Commission? Mm 
there are none, I'll make a motion that we approve subject to all staff comments. Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, please state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Green. Next, we have plats and plans. Our first item there is the Malloy property lot one mm -hmm. master plan and preliminary plat for one lot on 20.12 acres zoned light industrial located along New Salem Highway and Middle Tennessee Boulevard. Newton Malloy is the developer. And Mr. Bobby, hello. Hello, good afternoon, Chairwoman Jones and members of the Planning Commission. Uh, bringing to you this afternoon um, the master plan and preliminary plat for the Malloy property lot one. <coughs> this is a 20.12 acre parcel located at the intersection of Middle Tennessee Boulevard and New Salem Highway directly across from Heritage Farms Dairy. It does create one lot of record with the remainder of the property uh, being reserved for future development and includes um, one new street kill Brandon Drive as a part of the, the master plan. Um, the plat's in generally good order, and we would ask that any approval be subject to all staff comments. Okay. Questions for Mr. Barbie? <coughs> there are none. I'll make a motion to approve subject to all staff comments. <laughs> Second. Motion and a second. All in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you, Mr. Barbie. Next, we have West Long Commercial East, Section 1, Lot 1, Master Plan <coughs> and Preliminary Flat for one lot on 2.36 acres, zoned PUD, located along Veterans Parkway and Blackman Road. Os Oscar Properties LLC is the developer. Mr. Cooper, welcome. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, uh, Chairwoman Jones and members of the Planning Commission. <coughs> the item before you, as you mentioned, is uh, the master plan and preliminary plat for the eastern commercial section of the West Lawn subdivision. Um, these are consistent with the approved pattern book for this area, uh, with the plat they are committing to constructing um, a portion of the newly realigned Blackman Road. Uh, with the rest of the road expected to be construction constructed with the remainder of the lot. The remaining section of the portion of north of lot one is proposed as one lot in the program book and any further subdivision would require a PUD amendment and they were originally discussing doing another lot as well so um, they, they might be coming back with that PUD amendment in the future. Uh, the master plan and preliminary plat approval should be contingent on them addressing any remaining staff comments. Uh, I'm available for any questions, and Matt Taylor would be happy to answer any as well. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Cooper. Any questions or comments for Mr. Cooper or Mr. Taylor? If not, I'll move for approval subject to all staff comments. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please state aye. Aye. <coughs> Any opposed? Okay. And next, we have the West Lawn Commercial East Section 1, Lot 1 Preliminary Plat for one lot on 2.36 acres, zone PUD, located along Veterans Parkway and Blackman Road. Oscar Properties, LLC developer. Mr. Cooper. Thanks again. Uh, this is the final plat for the pr previously discussed West Lawn Commercial East Section 1, Lot 1 subdivision. Um, the plat is in generally good order and uh, approval should be contingent upon them addressing any remaining staff comments. Uh, this normally would be on consent agenda. It's just that we had the master plan and preliminary plat that we had to present before you. So um, if you have any questions for me or Matt, we'd be happy to answer. Okay, thank you. Any questions? There are none. I'll make a motion. We approve subject to all staff comments. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, Mr. Cooper. All right, moving on to new business. We have a zoning application for approximately 13.1 acres located along the north side of West Thompson Lane to be rezoned from RS-15 to PRD, King's Landing Villas. Black Diamond Development is the applicant. 
Ms. Green. Thank you very much. Our first item of new business is a request for you to schedule a public hearing for a rezoning application our staff has received for property located on the north side of West Thompson Lane. This property is currently located in city limits and is zoned RS15, that single family residential district with a minimum lot size of 15,000 square feet. You can see the subject area in the purple on the map that I have available on the screen. And um, it almost looks like a prong or a plug in um, because the center of the property is not a part of this application. It's an existing single family lot, um, owner occupied, and they were not interested in, in joining the application. We did ask the applicants to um, see if that would be something they would be interested in because we thought it would be a good effort to consider the whole area instead of having a little cutout. But um, the owner wasn't interested in changing at the time, but it's my understanding that the owner of that interior property is the one who's selling the remainder of the property. Um, they're, it, I, it has been explained to me that they're not um, unaware of any of the changes and are in favor of it, but of course our public hearing process will make sure anybody has an opportunity to speak. So although it's quite unusual, maybe a little bit awkward, I did want to speak to that because I, you know, it was probably one of the first things you noticed. The properties surrounding this area are zoned RS-15 as well, single family residential district. To the south is a rather large public institution or a church. And of course this property has frontage on West Thompson Lane. TDOT has plans to improve West Thompson Lane and those plans are already um, done and they're currently in their right of way acquisition phase which um, of course I, I can't speak to exactly how much time it will take but I know that that is something they're actively working on and with or, they gain, or obtaining the right of way that they may need for the improvements to West Thompson Lane. I have included in your materials information about a plan development and also information about the um, future land use map and what recommends for this area. The future land use map does recommend that this area, um, let me get the exact terminology here, develop a suburban residential character and the abbreviations SR. Let me go ahead and put that map. It's in my comments, there it is. And so the, the de designation of a suburban residential area allows a broad, broad range, range of commercial office or a broad range of commercial uses and they're usually large lots. It's supposed to be an area where you can see some transition from our more intense city type developments to rural areas. They do allow for smaller lots um, if the plan, the development plan provides options for um, smaller lots in exchange for greater open space. Mr. Uh, Clyde Roundtree is representing the applicant. I'm going to invite him to lectern in just a moment. I'll give you a few facts about the development, but really allow him an opportunity to present the request for you. The request, of course, is to zone the property PRD, Planned Residential District, and they're calling it King's Landing Villas PRD. As proposed, they would like to allow 42 single family attached units, and single family attached is another way of saying townhomes. So 42 townhomes with a minimum lot or a minimum building size of 1,000 square feet and two stories. They're also proposing to allow 29 single family detached lots, which are your traditional um, single family home on its own lot of record. And those are um, concentrated on the eastern side of the development adjacent to the existing Northboro Court subdivision. I think we're probably familiar, all of us familiar with that subdivision. And so staff asked them when they were looking at laying out this plan, they wanted to have townhomes in small lots. And we asked for them to put the townhomes on the opposite side of the existing city subdivision as a way to help mitigate or transition um, from those rather large lots to this proposed development. So they've been able to do that. We are still working with the design team on some of the nuances of the plans, but it was um, ready to come to you for you to consider scheduling a public hearing. We would recommend November 4th as a public hearing date. Um, if you are comfortable moving forward, of course you, you can push that out if you would like some additional information after you hear from Mr. Roundtree and hear his presentation. Um, although at this time I'd like to invite Mr. Roundtree to the lectern and let him go through the nuances of the plan. If you have any questions for me, I'll be glad to answer them. Mr. Chairman Jones, Commissioners, my name is Clyde Roundtree, House and Steel Engineering. Thank you for the opportunity to kind of elaborate a little bit on the plan for King's Landing Villas. I'm here with Mr. Randy Friesen, who is the developer on the project. Uh, Mr. Brian Oliver, the architect, is here as well. And Mr. Bill Huddleston and Enoch Gerald, engineers from Huddleston Steel. 
As Margaret Ann mentioned, uh, we are proposing 71 units on 13 acres, so it puts us around a density of a little over five units per acre. Mr. Freitzum, on the initiation of this project, met with the uh, planning staff. He, he just wanted to make sure that the density was going to be something that was going to be palatable with all the new concerns over sewer allocations. So he reached out to Valerie very much on the front end of this project to make sure that, um, that we were capable of handling it from a uh, sanitation consideration, sewer consideration. So that's the first thing he did. The second thing was um, he wanted to make sure that the overall density was something that was somewhat consistent with what we see along that development. So as Margaret had mentioned, it is a suburban residential as far as the 2035 plan, the uh, land use plan. So we're kind of bucking great against that a little bit. So we're going to work through that in the pattern book to make sure we can explain why. We're using as our justification right now that Tuscany right down the street as well as General's Landing are both projects that are very consistent with what we're proposing. So just kind of know there's some history on North Thompson Lane that we're kind of responding to. As Margaret Ann mentioned, all the single family homes are justified to the east. We did meet with the Northboro um, sub subdivision. Uh, they were very concerned when we did General's Landing over drainage. So prior to submittal of our application, we had to have a neighborhood meeting with those folks and we had it over at a park over by the airport and we were able to discuss their concerns and they do have concerns over drainage. Uh, what we did at General's Landing and will be consistent with what we plan on doing here is to do our best to alleviate any concerns they may have by allowing us to, we are proposing a drainage easement along the western side of this property that allow it to drain that can pick up any, any flow off of their property. Um, Mr. Gerald can elaborate on that a little bit more. But we, uh, we committed to them that we would take spot elevations on their particular site and if there's something we could do to help their water move in a more appropriate fashion, we'd do our best to accommodate that concern. The issue we're having is along that property line is a well-established tree line on the eastern property line. And so it's a little catch-22, do you want your trees or do you want your drainage cut? So we're kind of in the middle of that conversation. I think as they show up to the public hearing, we, we definitely reached out to them. They do have a point person that we're communicating with, and we have committed to do our best to alleviate their concerns. And General's Landing was successful in that regard. Several of the neighbors took advantage of having swales cut from their backyard into the General Landing swale to kind of take away some of their drainage issues. There are two entry points off of North Thompson Lane. Um, one thing we're working through with the staff is, is we have some roundabouts that we're proposing for basically for dampening speed along the, the main roads into the subdivision. So we're, we're going through that process to understand how best to handle that. As Margaret Ann mentioned, there's been a lot of critique on the architecture, just refinement, and Mr. Oliver has worked towards that end. So with that in mind, um, we feel like we've got an appropriate use for the location, and we're excited about operating you know, this to the neighborhood in the Murfreesboro community. And as we're seeing, there is a trend towards smaller lots across the board and attached homes, uh, Margaret I mentioned there's 42 attached and there's 26 three bedroom, 16 two bedroom. So it's a combination mix and we're still in the world of trying to make sure there's affordable places to live in Murfreesboro. So this project would definitely fit along those lines. So with that in mind, I'm available for any questions you may have. Um, if you have any questions about architecture or engineering, we've got support here for that as well. Okay, thank you, Mr. Roundtree. Questions for Mr. Roundtree. So with respects to the parcel that is not being contemplated, uh, is, is he just going to live there or, I mean? Hey, Mr. Halliburton, what, what's happened there is uh, and Randy's reached out to the, the owner multiple times. Um, there's a complicated situation. There is a, a young lady with, well, she's not young, but she's the daughter of the owner who has special needs. And um, the owner of the property understands that it'll be a little bit complicated, have some development around them. However, they don't want to change the circumstances for, for a daughter in that situation. Um, obviously, Mr. Freitz would like to have first rights whenever the time comes. We've actually kind of master planned over that parcel to make sure that when it comes online, we kind of know how to handle that. Staff has seen at least a, 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 you know, an early version of how that would lay out. Most likely the single family on the eastern side would just continue on the one side of that, that lot and then on the other side the townhomes would come down. But yeah, he's done everything and, and it, it's a little bit of a detachment. The, her kind of communicating source for the family are not interested in really 
working with the situation. They're just kind of want to let it lay. So as a result of that situation, we did propose a type A buffer just to create some separation um, whenever the construction, you know, is underway so we can create some sort of buffer initially. That's, you know, eventually that'll probably be taken out, that, that tree line that we have to put in. But he's reached out, and Randy's been really good about reaching out to the, the, the present owners to try to see if he can meet their needs or what their concerns are. And this situation is it's unique to my experience. I really hadn't been to one where it's a special needs situation. The family just doesn't want to disrupt the flow of that. Mr. Rounds, are, are those um, like modular units in the back of that currently on that property, or is it like barns? Uh, do you know? There are trailers currently. I think there's what six, Randy, or so. I think there's three or four left back there now. Yeah, they they're going to be removed upon as, as soon as we initiate. Are there any leases on those, Randy, or any no, rental agreements? Yeah, those will be removed, which would be a nice a nice thing. You can still see them from North Thompson. I would just question from the, the city standpoint and the services and especially emergency services up and down Thompson Lane, um, even if there's not going to be development on this interior parcel. Oh, it's all, all of this is all already in the city. We're just zoning, right? All of the purple and the interior lot is inside the city okay we got a lot of lot lines going i mean <laughs> yeah i know city As Marianne lines says, going along here strange. i was like okay are we leaving that out okay no lease lines though no lease lines <laughs> <laughs> good. no really tva good easement no us. lease line we're, we're in good shape <laughs> okay yeah it's not often a planner can use a term that a expert title uh, person doesn't know <laughs> uh, question you made me question myself when old expert when, <laughs> but the entire property is currently in the city limits um, for quite some time it was just uh, several feet along the north side of Thompson Lane but I think about 10 years ago the city took action to on our own volition to annex the remainder of the property and I remember doing some research regarding the amount of um, 911 calls that came from the mobile homes there were uh, I think more than we, we typically see and some other developments so um, I do recall recall that annexation it the property directly to the north is not in the city it's um, mm -hmm. okay but just north of that is the 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 city's farm okay so this lot the only parcel that is not in the city is this one mm -hmm. um, and then these two so there's a gap between city limits here and city limits here with that one parcel. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. If that helps at all. And this is city owned property, that's RS15. It's where we uh, spray our, um, our treated water. Mm -hmm. And this, um, Mr. Roundtree's right about the drainage. We had a neighborhood meeting and I was there and of course it was something that was discussed um, in depth. It's important to the residents, it's important to us and if you look at the ortho photos, you can see that this property has water um, that just sits on it for extended periods of time. And so the Northboro Court, Court residents, of course, didn't want that water just being redirected. And so our commitment to them was that our stormwater regulations would require that this property to continue to receive, retain, or release the water at the same rate it does today. Something different about the west side of Northboro Court as opposed to the east side of Northboro Court, because I think you will hear that not all the residents on the east side of Northboro Court were, were uh, completely satisfied with the ditch that was put in, although it did improve the situation. There's no drainage easement along the back of these lots. So we couldn't, the city couldn't go in, a developer couldn't go in and put any infrastructure in that would take um, any kind of rainwater into their system. The homeowners were required to do that improvement themselves. On this side of Northboro Court, there's actually a 20 foot drainage easement that runs along the back of these properties. There is, um, Mr. Roundtree suggested there are some trees there. Some may be good, some may be what I affectionately term trash trees or hackberries that the good of improving the drainage is more important than uh, keeping an old hackberry that's half dead anyway. Mm -hmm. And I'm a little bitter about paying $2,000 to remove a hackberry in my backyard, so you might be able to tell that. <laughs> and so there may be some things that this developer can do 
before the North Dakota court that they couldn't do on the opposite side because there's a drainage easement. It is recorded. It's part of the subdivision plan. When North Dakota court was initially um, constructed in the 80s, I think the standards the city had were different. Also, I don't think that the infrastructure was put in like it should have been. And so um, I'm not sure if there's just water in the yard or if it actually is affecting structures. Of course, we have different levels of reaction to water. Water being in your yard is an emergency. It's a natural phenomenon. But water in your HVAC or in your house or in your basement is, is really important. And so that's something that we would want to do something about immediately. We have from the neighbor received some testimony that, about water there and we're continuing to look at it. And part of what I want to meet with Mr. Roundtree Mr. and, and um, his team at Huddleston Steel is to see what we can do to maybe not only keep the situation as it is, but possibly improve it. So oftentimes when we look at zoning, we say what is the benefit to the community overall, not just to creating more houses or lots, but what can, what's the community gaining by this zoning change? And I think this is an opportunity to improve the quality of life for people who are already here. And if that's the case, that uh, of course would be something that we would be in support of. So I think our continued discussion will include a significant amount of time talking about drainage. Thank you. If I could add one, one thing to that too, based on what we've kind of, because we have a little traction with General's Landing, a lot of the drainage is coming from the north and it's, it's coming off of the city's property, which is really where they, I guess they discharge a lot of the re reclaimed water. And we don't know if there's any solution that could happen on the city property as far as detaining that water, slowing it down. But it seems like, because they're really trying to ask us to solve the problem that's coming from the north. And we're, as Margaret has mentioned, we're, we're looking to do anything we can within our site you know, to adjacent Northboro property, but a lot of it seems like it's migrating down. So with that in mind, there may be a bigger scheme we can get into. I must interrupt Mr. Roundtree, um, based on conversations I've had with Development Services Director and our, um, the many engineers we have on staff. I believe there's a perception that all the water is coming from the city-owned property. I don't think it's necessarily true. Um, some of it was water that was coming from there because there's natural drainage before the city ever owned the property it was coming, but now that we own it, I think it's, looks like an easy scapegoat. And I've been asked to, if this statement was made, to go ahead and say to you that maybe that's not a clear picture, 100% clear picture, and I would ask you to wait um, to make any of those statements until we do have a more full picture. I don't think the water problem is completely, our engineers don't think it's from the city spraying that water. It may be that the fact that there's a large, massive land that has water, and, and before the city ever owned it, water came off of it, but I did want to kind of stop Mr. Roundtree from talking, and maybe in the future we can hear from Mr. Huddleston who can explain it much better than I can. Thank you, Ms. Gray. We're looking into it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so we don't have other major questions and concerns. We are looking to schedule a public hearing. Move to set the public hearing for November 4th. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you all very much. Next, we have a zoning application for approximately 10.7 acres located at the northeast corner of New Salem Highway and Warrior Drive to be rezoned from RS15 to CH. Investment Partners, Inc. is the applicant. And Mr. Blomley is going to take this one today. Mr. Blomley. Sure. There's, there's a mass, mass exodus when I get yes. up here. Yeah. That was um, hard to get out of here. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the Planning Commission, and, and welcome to Mr. Wright to your first Planning Commission meeting. Um, uh, our next item under new business is a rezoning request um, for property that's located at the uh, northeast corner of the intersection of New Salem Highway and Warrior Drive. It's the Yori property. It's zoned RS-15. There's a single family home on it. It's the area colored in blue on the map before you. Um, as you know, over the last five or 10 years, there's been quite a bit of um, construction activity going on um, at this intersection. I think we're finally seeing the maturity of, of, uh, uh, of this inter interchange uh, and the development is, is finally moving forward around it as, uh, as the uh, roadway construction of New Salem Highway is is underway. Um, directly across New Salem Highway, there's the new racetrack and the U-Haul. Um, across Warrior Drive, there's the speedway that was constructed six or seven years ago in the uh, Dunkin' Donuts, the car wash, there's a retail center and an apartment complex. 
This property is, is currently zoned RS-15. It's really the only property that you'll notice in the vicinity that's zoned uh, single family residential. Um, and the property to the, to the east is zoned commercial highway. We've seen a, a site plan for a self-service storage facility located on that property. Directly to the north is the, is the on-ramp for, uh, for the interstate. Um, across the street is zoned commercial highway, across Warrior Drive and across New Salem Highway is zoned uh, light industrial. So it seems odd that this particular property is, is zoned RS-15 and everything else on that at the intersection of Warrior and New Salem Highway is, is zoned either commercial or industrial. Uh, aha, there is a, a little bit of history to that. Um, those of you, and I'm looking at Ms. Jones and Mr. Halliburton who have been on the Planning Commission a long time, um, you may remember that when we... <laughs> Mr. Halliburton, I believe you've been on there 14 years, so if I had to include you, you on that, because I think you were... You can count better than I can. <laughs> you, you were on the Planning Commission, I believe, back around probably 2010, 2011, when we studied the property in the area to zone it to commercial highway. And uh, the property across the street was zoned commercial highway. The property to the east was zoned commercial highway. We included the Yuri property as additional study area. Staff included that area as additional study area. Um, the Yuri family actually came, I believe, to the public hearing. And now I'm looking to Ms. Green because she's been here almost as long as I have. And I think that they actually asked that it be removed from the, from the request. And so it stayed zoned RS-15. Um, now, now they are looking to sell the property. Um, and uh, Mr. Matt Taylor with SEC has submitted a request to rezone it to commercial highway, consistent with what's across Warrior Drive and what is to the, to the east along Warrior Drive. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if, um, if Investment Partners has purchased the property or if they have it under contract. They have it under contract. They have it under contract. Uh, of course, Commercial Highway, there are numerous uses that, that could be developed under the Commercial Highway zone. Uh, they've submitted to us a concept plan, and we generally don't, don't provide you with concept plans when there's a rezoning request to a bulk zoning because we don't want to muddy the waters about what they're asking because the Commercial Highway zone would entitle them to develop numerous uses other than what might be shown in that concept plan. But I will mention to you that I believe it's their intent to develop um, uh, a commercial site that would include a um, gas station slash convenience market, as well as several uh, restaurant uses at that, on that property. Um, so that's, that's, that's their intent um, should they have the property rezone. Of course, as I mentioned with bulk zoning, there's nothing to hold them to that, to that intent. Uh, but I thought it would be worth mentioning what they have indicated to us they, that they want to do. The property is um, shown on the future land use map of the Murfreesboro 2035 plan uh, that uh, general commercial is the most appropriate land use designate or land use character for the property. Uh, the commercial highway zone um, fits within that general commercial uh, recommendation of the comprehensive plan. So this request is consistent with the Murfreesboro 2035 comprehensive plan. Um, be happy to answer any questions regarding um, this application. Mr. Matt Taylor is here as well, as is Mr. John Harney, uh, also involved in, in, the, uh, in the application. Um, we would recommend that you schedule a public hearing for this request for November the 4th. Be happy to answer any questions. Questions for Mr. Blomley? I'll move that we set a public hearing for November 4th. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Blomley. Appreciate it. And next, we have a zoning application for the PS pl Planned Signage Overlay District zoning for Costco Wholesale for approximately 20.2 acres located along BC Road and Warrior Drive. Costco Corporation is the applicant. Ms. Stevens, welcome. Good afternoon. Y'all are going to get tired of seeing me with all these 
plan sign overlays. <laughs> uh, all right, that's good stuff. So the, the subject property is located at 1524 BZ Road, 1512 BZ Road, and 1536 BZ Road, along BZ Road and Warrior Drive. The property consists of approximately 20.2 acres, and the property is zoned light industrial. Um, the, the purpose of the plan sign overlay is to allow the applicant an opportunity to present a cohesive plan for an entire project that addresses everything from permanent building signage to temporary signs. The proposed plan sign overlay would allow larger and additional attached signs that allowed by the existing sign ordinance. Um, I provided a table to give information as it pertains to the current sign ordinance as well as the signage proposed in the plan sign overlay. Um, and you also were provided a copy of the master plan as attached. Uh, you can see there are some significant differences in sizes, but the, considering the size of the building, I think they're reasonable to request um, the number of signs and the square feet of signs that they're asking for. There are no proposed ground signs or freestanding wall signs for this property, um, and staff has continued to work with the applicant on convenient signs, the inner and exit signs, as, where, as well as the temporary signs, so I didn't include the, the differences between our sign ordinance and those. Um, we have joining with us via Zoom with, is Steve Warfield, Marta Skopinski, and Eric Brom from Costco, and they'll be glad to answer any questions commissioners may have. We're uh, requesting a public hearing be set on this matter. Okay, thank you, Ms. Stevens. Have any questions in regard to this uh, ES overlay for Costco? I have a quick question. Um, we recently passed something that limited the sign, the size of signs for temporary signs. Just I want to know for formality, because they have a temporary sign in the PSO package, does that override? It will. It'll, and that would would be the same with any temporary signs in any of our PSOs. They'll still be if we approved the PSO ten years ago. That'll still be what they're. So a lot of our PSOs refer to the sign ordinance, so for those it will change with it, but if it's independent of our sign ordinance, it'll stay the same. Okay, I want to make sure. Thank you, Ms. Garland. Any other questions? And November 4th, are we good yes. for that? Is that good, Mr. Ives? Yes. Okay. I'll move that we set a public hearing for November 4th. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, November 4th. Okay, that concludes our new business. And we next have staff reports and other business. Oh, thought we didn't have any, but I saw a hand go up over here. Mr. Blomley, what you got? Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a couple of reminders. Um, uh, as Mr. McKnight has, has let you all know, we have a few um, Planning Commission workshop meetings coming up, the first of which will be this coming Monday the 26th at, uh, at 1 p.m., or excuse me, 2 p.m., and the next one will be Monday, November the 2nd at 2 p.m., and the final one will be Monday, November the 9th at 2 p.m., and we're going to cover, cover a variety of topics, and uh, we look forward to those. Um, those workshops and those will all be here in the in the council chambers and they've been advertised as public meetings um, in the Murfreesboro Post uh, to meet our to meet our um, open meetings requirements and um, so obviously we're not being televised right now but if we were I would let the public know that they are public meetings and they're welcome to attend uh, the other thing that I wanted to remind you all you're probably getting sick of me emailing you about uh, uh, the training that uh, that we have coming up uh, it's on November the 13th. Ms. Jaco has been so kind as to, as to register all Planning Commission members, Board of Zoning Appeals members and staff for this uh, free training opportunity. It's uh, TAPA, just to plug TAPA. TAPA is our state chapter of the American Planning Association, the Tennessee chapter of the American Planning Association. They recognize the limitations of, of, um, of in-person training sessions right now and so they are attempting to fill that vo void knowing that there is state mandated state mandated con continuing education requirements for um, planning support staff 
uh, planning commission members and board of zoning appeals members. So they're providing us this free opportunity. Um, I think it it meets that intent of of trying to knock out our training requirements. But I think we've also got a couple of really good speakers, and I think that um, it'll be a great opportunity for uh, for all of us. So, um, and as I mentioned in the email, it's um, it will be held virtually live on Friday morning, the 13th of November from eight to, to noon. You can, um, you can uh, attend virtually at your, at your home office or your office office. And, um, but if you can't watch it during that time, it will be posted subsequently on TAPAS website. And I'll provide you all a link to that. Um, anybody who, who would need that link, I'll provide you all a link to that. So we hope y'all can, y'all can take part in that. And that's all I have, Ms. Jones. Right. I have nothing. Thank you. Nothing. Okay. Anybody else? All right. Thank you very much. And we do stand adjourned.